The serial killer with a disposal site has now relieved a lot of the stress because he knows exactly where he's going to bring the victim's body. Once they drop that body, they decompress and now they're ready and they hunker down and prepare for the next time out. Former homicide commander of the NYPD Bronx Homicide Task Force, Vernon Gay Berth, has worked hundreds of murder cases and has studied this one closely. I don't think if Shannon Gilbert's mother didn't make the hue and cry that she did, that they would have done anything in Suffolk County. If that was some millionaire debutante from the Hamptons, I bet you there would have been a whole crew out there looking for her. It was a u unique case because there was a disposal site. Not many serial killers maintain a body disposal site. Now, the psychological significance of a disposal site is that the killer goes back to this site much more comfortable second, third, and fourth time, but gets to relive the event because the total control of another being is what drives them. This guy is a sexual sadist, there's no doubt about it. For him to take the phone and call Melissa's little sister and describe, vividly describe what he did to her sister and how he's gonna do it to her, that, that is him reliving the crime. The problem was that the cell call were made from midtown Manhattan and out in the island. They couldn't find him, there's too many, too many calls. And then he disposed of the phone. I think is the same serial killer. And as far as the speculation, we have three, we have two, we have four, that's all silliness. Any homicide cop worth his salt knows that these cases are related. Former Bronx Homicide Task Force Commander Vernon Giberth says the full court press should have started the day police found the first four bodies wrapped in burlap. Everybody knows somebody in Long Island. And I'm telling you for the record, that the person who did this was highly stressed and people close to him would have seen a sudden change in his demeanor. He wouldn't have gone to work, he would have started drinking, he would have acted strange, and he would have left the area. Shannon Gilbert. She fits the same profile as all the other girls. She's an escort service girl. She is going out to do a trick and she doesn't come back. How can you separate Shannon Gilbert from those other victims? You can't. The way she operated, the MO was completely different. She had a driver. Brewer had the driver bring Shannon to his house. With these young women, there was no driver. They were lured into some location. We still believe and we hold to it that she succumbed to the elements. Just doesn't make sense that she would run naked through a marsh and then die if there wasn't somebody out there who was also involved in her death. Still overseen by the same prosecutor's office. Yet neither would speak to us which has now led us to the only officer who would. I was a captain and vice on Lang City Police Department. I got the call at home from my boss, the deputy chief. Um, he said, Hutchie says, uh, they found some girls in West Atlantic City. They think they're probably hookers, so you're probably gonna get a call. Okay, chief, I never got the call. So we never got contacted to help identify him until like three days later. The then prosecutor, Jeff Blitz, ordered us not to talk to the media about anything. So we didn't. They didn't ask me for manpower, which we could have gave them a lot. If they would have had that manpower, would there be a difference now? I, I don't know, but we'll never know because that didn't happen.